Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the men's show where we have the three best looking men for the men's show. Nick De La Torre, not one of the best looking men. Rob Holler, definitely not one of the best looking men, but the three of us together today, we're talking about men and the movies in just a moment. <laughs> Let's tee up the first video. Have you ever dreamed of visiting Paris in the fall? Seeing the beautiful Eiffel Tower lit up by a sunset. Visiting and venerating holy locations of the Sister Saints of France in the Sioux, Paris, Lourdes, and more. This fall 2021, join select international tours with Claire Swinarski and Catherine Whitaker, along with a host of other powerful Catholic women on a once in a lifetime Seine River cruise pilgrimage in France. Join our friends at Select International Tours and Cruises. With over 34 years of experience, they are the perfect company to help you experience pilgrimage. To learn more, visit selectinternationaltours.com slash awaken. Bon voyage! They're, they don't know why we're advertising a women's cruise on the med show. Well, wait a like, I'm watching I've, that. I'm I've thinking, you know, that, I, might that go, is... I might go on that. I, I go on that <laughs> we're not allowed. I've heard that the, that the men's show is the clear favorite for women in the Awakened Catholic audience. So They're, maybe it makes sense. Could be. Could imagine why. But All right. So we're going to get into the topic today unless I have to do some more advertisements. I'm not sure. But thank you to our sponsors, Select. Uh, it's going to be a great cruise. Father Jeff might even just show up because no, they don't need you know. a chaplain, right? Sometimes right. I can get it. Yeah, all those need a chaplain, things, absolutely. Right? So, all right, awakencatholic.org/slash/donate. Please help us and become a part of Awaken Nation. We need you to keep this great Catholic, edifying content coming to you and wherever you're at. Secondly, there's a tremendous app, and it's uh, awakenapp.io. You can download it and become a part of Awaken Catholic family and community. Um, and I think that's it for sponsors. Um, today's topic, we really don't have one, quite frankly. We just wanted to talk about movies and our favorite ones. Well, I think it's and do movies matter. We were trying really hard to find <laughs> an angle, but we decided to just. But that, that's good. Do, do movies matter? matter? Yes. Okay. Very John good. Mark and I seem to think they do. And, and as you no, and Pete seems to think that all the best movies are terrible. No, no, I yes. do think movies yes. matter. However, like we have different qualifications for what makes a good movie. So, for example, there might be someone on the panel that thinks Jurassic Park is a great film. <laughs> I clearly and objectively speaking, you can say that it's not compared okay, first, to other films that are out there. I think this is important. Shots. Following up what? from our um, inter-episode debate on Mr. Rogers, have yeah. you ever seen Jurassic Park? I have seen Jurassic Park, yes. Okay. But isn't good there like five or six of them or something? <laughs> there are, it's quite the franchise <laughs> okay, yeah. because it's so good. <laughs> it has endured the years. Well, I'm not but sure like, if that's the reason. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the original we're talking sure. about here, like yes, Jurassic yes, Park yes. 3, that's for the birds. Yes. But the original, yeah. fantastic movie, mm -hmm. and I don't know why you hate it so much. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I mean, I don't hate it. It's it's entertainment. But, like, mm -hmm. the question is, when we've talked about this on other men's shows, like the idea of video games and whether or not this is the way that men should be spending their leisure time. Mm -hmm. And so I think the purpose of movies is to draw our hearts and minds closer to God. It's, mm. it's to edify us. It's not just for this very baseline entertainment purpose. Mm. So I think Jurassic Park, uh, Park is like, all right, it's entertainment. There's dinosaurs and all those things of that nature, but it's, I don't walk out of there feeling like I'm a better man, mm. you know? And so I want to walk out of a film or a movie saying I've thought more deeply about my life or I've thought about changing my life or like same reason I read a book. It's not just because I want to be entertained, but it's because I want to grow as being a man. Well, listen, what's that quote from Thomas Aquinas? Do you like Thomas Aquinas? How do you feel about him? Are you all right with him? <laughs> That's a setup question. I do like <laughs> okay. Thomas Aquinas. Okay. Of course do I do. Like Thomas Aquinas. So there's some quote, I'm terrible at quoting people off the top of my head, but it, 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 there's some quote from him about it being necessary from time to time for the relaxation of the mind, for a man to take part in, in jokes and I forget whatever, what else he says, but I would think like if there were such things as movies, he would have said movies that that's all right for the relaxation of the mind from time to time um i think that's important for me i'm a little defensive because i'm a i'm a day <laughs> off movie goer like that's one of my my staple things to relax the mind um and and i i think it's it's a healthy thing i had an english teacher in high school i mean everyone's got like some english teacher along the way that said something that was impactful um but she was she was a very brilliant woman she is a very brilliant woman um very good teacher 
um, and could spent her days like diving into important topics in great works of literature. And she said, but you always have to have some book that you're reading that just makes you drool, hmm. that you don't have to think too hard about, that that you're not constantly looking for layers and layers of meaning because that's good for the relaxation of the mind. It's engaging the mind, but it's not it's not strenuous. And so when I when I saw um this teacher who I admired very much and who is very smart and who is very um committed to to literature saying, you know, but you gotta have a drool book as well. I sort of think, yeah, there's there's an importance in good cinema that has layers upon meeting and moves the heart. And I like movies like that too. But I also like Jurassic Park. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's a drool movie. Well, and I don't know if I agree with it necessarily being it. I mean, there's some good content in it. I think it is an exciting story, and as a sci-fi story, I mean, I don't know if you've read any of Michael Crichton. Uh, he was the author of the original story that it based on, you know, science fiction uh, as a genre is a really important genre. Mm -hmm. It's the most philosophical of the genres. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's able to take up questions, put them in a theoretical context, and play them out so that we can consider them. Should Man can. What's the what's the quote? You know. Oh, they it's were... Ian Malcolm. You spent so long wondering if you could, you didn't stop to think whether or not you should. Yeah, and he and we we that's have this, great. We have this great Pete, playing hate, out of, of human hubris. Important moral you know? questions right, being so, posed in fun ways. Okay, so it's got a great score. Uh, that's, I mean, uh, it's got a great score. It, it and it does have those moments. It's not all drools, I suppose. Right. But, yeah. But you don't have to sit. That's that's like a smack you over the face kind of thing. Yeah, you don't have to like unpack the the mm. meaning of that quote. It's just very clear. But that's a good example of it. Yeah. So I want to talk directly to you, <laughs> my friends. Is this about the awakened nation again? <laughs> we want to see a better nation. So the question is, how do we get there? <laughs> um, so okay, so there's a couple of different things here. Um, it, Engaging in a drool book, as you call it, um, I think there's a different way that that stimulates the mind than sitting like a potato before a drool movie for two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. Because at least in the drool book, there is a little bit more engaging of the intellectual senses. Mm -hmm. Like your mind has to create the picture of what you're reading. Mm -hmm. When like Jurassic Park is just presented to you and you're a, a much more passive recipient of the drool, if you will. So that's where I would say, okay, I would be more comfortable saying, okay, it's okay to lose yourself a little bit more in a book than say a Friday afternoon for two and a half hours into a movie, particularly because like that can quickly, especially in our culture and society become, it's, I have a friend named John Mark, he talks about prudence and all these things all the time, but it's that sense of like, <laughs> you know, we enter into whether it's, you know, Netflix or whatever the, the streaming service is. I mean, you can just drool and drool and escape reality a lot. But like, so what part, what part for you does it play? I mean, is it once a month? Is it once a year? I mean, how do you determine like what's well, good well, for you to escape? Well, this is the difference. I think you're changing you. the argument on me a little I'm bit here. I'm not changing anything. Yeah, because there's a difference between going to a movie and watching a movie just for the pure entertainment value of it without deeper meaning or whatever. Mm -hmm. And what you're describing as sort of like losing hours and hours and hours to this and, yeah. and binging on movies. Like if you're going to go to the movies all day, you're going to do some like 12-hour mm -hmm. movie marathon or binge an entire season of something on Netflix. Yeah, I think that's a very unhealthy thing, um, of course. But that's very different from, um, from thinking that, you know, this two hours is – is a waste of my precious time because it doesn't have deep, re deep effects in my life. Well, and, and I don't know if I want to use the like we have this term now that we're using as our as our Thanks. vocabulary. Shout out the, to Mrs. Drool, who will never watch. She this, might have but. been exaggerating a little bit, maybe <laughs> hyperbolically with that term because I, English I feel like teachers can do that. Sometimes. We can we can you know make some distinctions. I mean, there's certainly movies that that we pro probably all three of us here would agree. That mm -hmm. there's never time for that. It is either so immoral or just so dumb. Absolutely. They're probably there. Same with books, too, you know, even across Absolutely. that genre. You know, but when we talk about like a movie like a Star Wars movie or a Jurassic Park movie, part of what it is, is it is this really interesting, uh, exciting a spectacle of art. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I mean, okay, maybe you don't like Jurassic Park, but there are these movies that bringing together the music and the mm -hmm. good, the, the fun, interesting acting, mm -hmm. a good combination of the comedy and the, and the, and the, you know the, the mm -hmm. drama of that, like it is a really moment in movie history. It's a it's a really mm -hmm. interesting experience, mm -hmm. and there's a and to 
make a, a an intentional choice saying, okay, I'm, I've worked a long, hard week. I'm going to go to the movies mm-hmm. and see this this uh, Jurassic Park movie. Mm-hmm. That is really different than be like, okay, well, I'm for the fifth day in a row, I'm 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 uh, I'm bored, and I'm just going to waste this afternoon right. on whatever happens to me on the TV. I have to stop doing things that are actually productive now and go. Yeah. To, to drill for a while with that intention. But that's like that's another great example, though, with Star Wars, because that's a, another movie that I wouldn't put like that's not on the same level as like these great cinematic things. George Lucas himself said to all these people who are sort of like yeah. really into all of it. He's like, come on, there. It's a space. It's a space Western movie. <laughs> it's just it's it's not that much. Oh, wait, now um, we're going to argue about. Jurassic well, Park I'm going to get Wars. hate mail for that, <laughs> I think. But. Um, like the Star Wars movies, a great example that as those come out, so I've seen all the Star Wars movies, that's become a tradition with my nephews Nice. that um, whenever a Star Wars movie comes out, they know they're going to go with Uncle Jeff. We're going to go see the Star Wars movie um, and we're going to talk about it for a while afterwards. And mm-hmm. that does not consume our life, yeah. but this is a moment of, of goodness. And there, it it's not that we have a discussion about the deep philosophical stuff I, though sometimes that that is presented in there and so sometimes it is a greater conversation mm. but it's just a moment of innocent i would say amoral enjoyment i wouldn't say amoral i think the way that you're describing it there it is it's a it's a, moral it's a positive moral. it's a it's a it's a positive choice to do something so amoral people. was not the right word you're right but i'm not sure yeah go ahead <laughs> no no you yeah. went like this before so i want to give you I, I so it, here's also a struggle, and I don't know if we want to go down this rabbit hole. Probably not. This is just in my mind. See what happens. Okay. Speak it. Speak freely. Um, but let me see if I can wrap it all back together in a bow. Um, so when I relate it to something of uh, that I find of, of greater value, like I love athletic competition. Okay. And one of the things that my family bonded over was going to Cleveland Indians games, mm-hmm. which also, you know, roughly two and a half hours. So the, the length of mm-hmm. a film, whatever it may be. And in the baseball game, you have baseball players and they're just performing at the excellent level of, you know, their professional sport. And I think you could say the same for movies and acting, the, the, the music that's put together. It's like there's a sense of people are putting together, you know, excellence to a certain extent. And so there's, there's value in being the best in, in your craft. But one thing that you said that kind of struck me, I'm like, you know, this doesn't consume me. Um, but I would argue for our American society today that we are consumed by these escapes, whether it be professional sports or the movies, whatever it may be. We're, we're, I mean, think about how much money, I mean, talking probably billions of dollars into the Star Wars franchise. Mm-hmm. Billions of dollars that are invested in Major League Baseball, playing these guys to play sport and so on and so forth. So as we as Catholic men, when we look at leisure activities, whether it's going to the movies on a Friday afternoon or going to a baseball game and so on and so forth, like, is this really like we we from the, you know, we're, we're saying, well, it doesn't really consume me. It's just a little bit of part or whatever, but it so consumes our culture. We're so much a part of it. And we're just we're so taken up in it then I'm not sure we really appreciate the time that we are wasting watching them. Mm. Um, You know, and some of this comes from my experience. And I remember going down my junior year at John Carroll University to Ecuador, and we Mm -hmm. went to a community called Vente de Ocho. It was found on a garbage dump. So literally thousands of people living on a garbage dump. There's buzzards up ahead. The the smell and the refuse, I will never, ever forget. Um, And I came home from Ecuador completely transformed and just blown away by this experience because everything I worried about, including, you know, whether the Browns and Indians will make the playoffs and so on and so forth, like it just put everything in perspective, like all those things that I cared about and spent my time, you know, focused on, Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter at the end of the day because there's a kid in Duran, Ecuador right now that's starving without food. But I went to the baseball game with my dad, like he was really excited for me to come home and it was during the summer. And so we went to a baseball game and just having left Ecuador where all the water was delivered in these outside trash cans on a daily basis. And it wasn't really clean water. Uh, But I watched as the Indians grounds crew was pouring down and making sure the mud on the infield was just nice and flat. So the ball would skip, you know, perfectly. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching this clean water just kind of be wasted, if you will, on a field. And so like, I still think there's value in, again, the professional excellence of playing a sport, the professional excellence of making a film and movie. Um, 
But like with so much important work to do in the world, mm. is there a better form of leisure that we can invest our money in as Catholic Christians that doesn't encourage this incredible vast space and sums of money where we've continued to put it in because it's been created by our culture and society? Like, do we need to withdraw from that world a little bit so that we can be more engaged in the more important forms of leisure? So like a form of leisure of, you know, being together with, you know, you mentioned, so your family gets together and they watch Star Wars movie. Like, could it be like the family goes fishing together, the family plays football together, or there's like, there's an activity where you're doing it together and it's not involved in spending all our money into this big behemoth of what is American society and what we consider is proper entertainment versus movie versus time together, learning how to be men or be women, whatever it may be. Yeah. So obviously... Lots of good stuff there, you know. But, but one of the issues, of course, is there's there's two kind of realms of, of issue there. One is just the question of what our society is actually doing with this stuff in general, um, versus you know what this looks like in isolation. Because in any like we have to figure out the principles involved here. Because the reality is, if we were living in like an Amish lifestyle, with where all this stuff was aside, we would find within our community, within our lives, the same dilemmas that we'd have to discern. The same questions of you know higher or lower, which do we use or you know, the culture versus pop culture, those kind of things. So we have to have, we have to come up with principles and reasonings here, reasons here that can be applicable to different types of situations. And I had another point there I was going to make, I can't remember what it is. But I, I, to me, the, the, again, the problem with, sometime, with, with some of the, the reasons we come up with this is that we couldn't apply it, I guess, universally to d different circumstances because um, I mean, Lewis wrote about this a little bit. He, ha he has a couple essays about this, about like when there was a war going on. Should we still be teaching university? Should the artists mm -hmm. still be making art? Mm -hmm. Should the writers still be writing? Because you you need to have an argument that that doesn't um, eliminate that, uh, because that clearly seems like well no we still need a culture we still need art the artists should still be doing art if they're not uh, away at the war and not be like mm -hmm. well there's no point in my art anymore because there's a war happening. No, there's still mm -hmm. a place in human life for those. In fact, we almost need to continue to build those um, well art in particular even when there are awful things happening in the world, precisely to pr preserve that aspect of human life where we do some things, uh, we, like we, we play for the sake of play. Like there's still a place for that. Right. So we have to have arguments that, you know, address, that can address, you know, some of our, some of our indulgences, our overindulgences of our culture without at the same time eliminating the underlying, um, I don't know, things that are involved there. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that, and there's, it might be the same quote you're thinking about, but it was like, you know, how should we behave during the nuclear age? Yeah. And yeah, Lewis was like, yeah. well, continue having babies, continue living life, writing, you know, mm -hmm. books and so on and so forth. So, yeah. yeah, I think there's, there's real merit to that. I just wonder if there's a call today as Christian men in today's society where we've gone so overboard with these modes of entertainment that we need to take a step back and say, all right, how do we withdraw and really you know, create a new culture where the human person can really flourish. And I mean, so that's why when I go to the movies, like, or, I mean, I haven't been to the movies literally probably in, I don't know, three and a half years. I think maybe it was the movie about Lincoln. I mean, once you get married, it's kind of like, you know, you got to find a babysitter, all those other things that go into it. Um, but I like movies that like, are, that make you think and that, you know, again, try to challenge you to be a better person. And so maybe that's a question I have for you too. So Jurassic Park, we can use that example. I know you're very sensitive about that, Father Jeff. So we can put <laughs> another example if you want. But Only like, on principle. <laughs> but but do you, does that make you? Does going to that movie having that? And so if I see the ground that the, it's good to have art, it's good to have mm -hmm. these uh, movies that we kind of not waste time, but we um, it's not a higher form of you know mm -hmm. challenging you. Like how does that make you? A better person does that make you a better person like what are your mm -hmm. thoughts on like i so when the question comes up about leisure mm -hmm. and how do you enter into a sabbath rest um the question is resting well but i think that how people rest well within the realm of morality can be answered in different ways um and so how does watching a movie that um is perhaps not faith-based or politically expedient or that's just sort of a entertaining movie a dinosaur movie a star wars movie a comic book movie what mm -hmm. um is that 
it's it's for the relaxation of the mind, which I think is is a necessary part of the human experience. And I, and I think it, it reminds me of something because um, I've been th part of what I've been thinking about this discussion is the question of like culture versus pop culture. Like we recognize that there is great art and there's a place in our life where we need to to expose ourselves to stuff that's beyond us, um, and that's an important an important activity in our life, you know, maybe to read mm -hmm. literature, philosophy, theology, things that are beyond us precisely to push ourselves further. But there, I think there is a place too in culture and in family and an in individual's life for some element of pop culture in the sense of there being not certainly not sinful things, but popular things. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. Uh, uh, Chesterton has this quote about small talk where he's talking about how mm -hmm. like what do we make of small talk? What do we t what do we make of this 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 human custom of coming together oh, and it. talking for about the weather? And I do too. <laughs> but he points out that the, it's actually this this sort of inaction of, of of the incarnation, where God condescends. He comes down to our level, and he and he what does he do with the apostles? He eats fish and. You know, well, we've had a discussion about whether Jesus joked with the disciples. That's a different, different <laughs> conversation. Pete doesn't think so. Um, <laughs> what? That's, but he certainly lived a human life. He went to yeah. a wedding. He had yeah. wine. Like he, right. you know, he maybe he even danced at that wedding. Pete, you know, I mean, shocking. And didn't sound. he know that there was a whole world that needed converting? And yeah. and, and what's happened there? So uh, the, the individual person, or in that case, God Almighty, has come down to the the, the common level, the popular level, not to sin, never to sin. But to but to engage in something that is is popular, and I think of this in the context of a father. Like I would love, I often mm -hmm. will. To my frustration, my kids would just be like, mm -hmm. they're already reading philosophy, they're already on their knees, they're already saints. I will that kind of mm -hmm. stuff all the time. I pray for it all the time. But in the reality is, most days my kids want to talk about like fairies or some movie that they watched or some mm -hmm. book that they're reading or some story that they want to tell me that for the fifth time in a row. And I think and, that's and so there's there has to be a, a mix there where I want to call them deeper, but I also need to come down to their level and and just enjoy something with them so that I can invite them. Higher. And I think that's you struck something there with what appeals to your your children, what appears appeals to the innocent. Uh -huh. Um a lot is the story. Yeah. So a, a, what makes a good movie or an entertaining movie is the telling of a story, mm -hmm. the telling of there's some drama, there's some conflict, there's there's characters that that you want to know more about. Yeah. And so to tell a story that is true is a is a worthwhile experience. It doesn't have to have happened. It doesn't have to be um, yeah, artistic the most, truth. Yeah. Yeah. It, to tell a story that's true, I think, is what makes for a good movie. Yeah, and think, so how does that make me a better person? Well, um, me personally, I'm I'm an evangelist. I'm I'm meant to tell the greatest story ever told. And so to understand how stories are told, to experience good storytelling, um, and and to simply enjoy that experience, I think is a beneficial thing. I think it's a good thing. So bringing up the kids example, I think is a really good, important point, because I've just noticed in my own children's lives, um, whatever is fed to them is what will kind of come back out. And so if Gianna watches Pinkalicious, uh, you know, three days straight, she's going to be talking a lot about Pinkalicious. I'm, but uh, if we turn on... Is that a bubblegum? Pinkalicious is a show about a young girl. I'm is showing here. She, <laughs> <laughs> she it just turns pink because she eats a lot of, you know, okay. pink, whatever. I don't know. So anyway, um, but whatever Gianna's watching is what we'll end up discussing. But like we just finally got formed on our TV and everything like that. And like they've been watching the shows about Jesus and all sure. Gianna's drawing now is like, you know, the Virgin Mary. It's like it's mm -hmm. so beautiful. But I think like just like kids are that way, we're that way too. And like we're called, you know, Romans 12 is like be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Um and it's kind of goes back to what we were talking about the other show. Like, why are we so uncomfortable talking about Jesus? I think it's because a sense of like what we filled our minds with so much of this other stuff. Like we don't, yes, we need time for the mind to relax and to, for the mind to get away from the stresses and the worries of the world. Um, but is, is films, is movies the answer to that? Like, isn't, time before the blessed sacrament an hour before the Lord, where it's contemplative prayer, more renewing for our mind, more of a Sabbath than say this, this particular form of entertainment. I think we would all probably say, well, yes. 
Sure. I'm not going to argue with that. Well, okay, <laughs> but isn't good. the Catholic response usually both and? I don't think – I don't understand why one excludes the other. Yeah. And it seems like mm-hmm. most of your arguments come seem to come down to them. That's my worry. That one excludes the other or that it always leads to excess. It always leads to binging. This is yeah. consuming your entire life. And I, I feel like John Mark saying that maybe maybe temperance – is is the virtue to be sought here that one can enjoy the things of this world no matter what they are per, within the realm of morality um temperately and that you can you can binge on anything even things that are good in such a way that makes it sinful yeah. i do think it would be sinful if you spent all of your time in holy hours in church mm-hmm. because you're not a monk right you have right, right. you you have Life outside of um, of the church. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so I think just to say that one thing, yes, that what's what's better, the time that you spend with Jesus in the tabernacle, or the time you spend with your daughter watching Pink Alicious? I don't know. Both have equal value in their time. Mm-hmm. You spending time with your daughter, and and certainly there's a and, there's a like you you might. Yeah, perhaps you know on form. There's a better show that you wanted to watch than Pink Lush, mm-hmm. certainly. But again, uh, what the reality is that any situation you were in, any any time period in history, any technological situation, is that there would be stuff that our family members and our children want to talk about mm-hmm. and want to focus on that just don't interest us. And then there's this opportunity where we say, okay, wait a minute, I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> Stop yeah, the I want to talk, but I'm stopping myself. Are we misrepresenting? From uh, no. Yes. First of all, I am misrepresented all the time on this show. I do think Jesus told jokes, we love that he you laughed, Peter. all those things. Oh, Absolutely. You, you guys took a pretty strong line on that one. I don't know. Um, it, it's just so I, I get it in the context of, you know, whether A, raising our kids or B, evangelizing that we condescend to uh, the, the level of the individual that they're at, that we share in that with them. Um, but like when it comes to, you know, again, how we intentionally decide to spend our time of leisure, whether it's going mm-hmm. to the movies or taking mm-hmm. our son to the movies or whatever it may be. Like if I have a choice from to take my son to a movie about X, which has a very strong moral point uh, that's entertaining, mm-hmm. but, but has like a good mm-hmm. lesson in it versus taking uh, my son to the movie about dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I might choose in that limited amount of time I have with him to take him to that moral, morally. Mm-hmm. Good I was once movie. told recently, though, that um, that th- truth should be taught to someone in the mode that they can receive it. <laughs> and I'll tell you this: Jurassic Park <laughs> came out in what, like ninety five, ninety three, something like that, early nineties, first yeah. half of the nineties. Um, and I can quote that line from Ian Malcolm that I was probably eight or nine years old when I heard about you spent so much time thinking about whether you could, you didn't stop to think about whether you should. There are few people in the world who are bigger fans of C.S. Lewis than I. You ask my poor parishioners all the time, Mm -hmm. quoting the C.S. Lewis. I've seen Shadowlands, which you mentioned right before this, um, that you might consider your favorite movie. Can't, I've seen it as well. Love C.S. Lewis. Can't tell you a thing about it. Mm -hmm. Can't, I couldn't quote it. Couldn't, Nothing. So again, I'm going back to like, you have to be attentive to the mother receiver. So I said that, well, quoting Aristotle for a couple thousand Last years episode. ago. Um, <laughs> but, but here's the, the issue in the context of like, you know, every child that grows up is going to be formed and shaped by the parents. And we've done such mm-hmm. a bad job, I would say, as parents, mm-hmm. the past 30, 40, 50 years, like forming our kids that, yeah, the only thing they're going to receive is, is something that's very much a part of pop culture. And then God uses, I mean, he uses everything. We can find the seeds mm-hmm. of the word everywhere. So you can go to Jurassic Park and God can use that mm-hmm. to powerfully transform your heart and mind mm-hmm. to come and know and love and serve him. Like, because nothing is beyond God's capabilities, mm-hmm. but it's like, is, um, is that going to be the way that like God can work more easily if you have a group of friends who are all faith filled, they go to church and they're living the virtues and so on and so forth. Versus if you hang around with a group of friends that are drinking all the time and binging on things or whatever, like God, I would think naturally desires the individual to be a part of that group of friends that have that better values. So in the same way, when we're choosing our entertainment, 
I would think that God would desire us to choose things that are more edifying and more uplifting to the heart than just something that is just like, oh, I just need to kind of escape from the world, get away. And I'm only going to do it here. I'm, I'm using it prudently, but I'm only doing it for two and a half hours. But it's kind of like, I'm just going to numb myself from the world and enter into something fun. Well, like, so I think we, God wants us to yeah, choose the, the highest. be intentional with everything that we're doing, whether it's even just choosing the movies that we watch. Well, it, it, yeah, it is intentional. But again, like in the situations, some of the examples that we just brought up here, I, I, I'm an overbearing father. Like I'm always wrestling with this in my marriage and my family. Like I tend to try to make every single conversation with my kids a lecture. I tend to want mm-hmm. them to read books that I would find interesting to discuss with them. Mm-hmm. And there's a place for some of that. That's part of my role is to lecture a little bit and to teach and to to invite them higher but the the place that i fail at in my in my fatherhood one of the places many 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 places i fail at my father is that it it's always an afterthought like oh i spent this whole day putting off my kid because he just wanted to show me this calvin and Hobbes comic strip that he read you know during his spare time after he got his schoolwork done and I, in my mind, I'm thinking of, no, no, I want to get, I want to do a catechism lesson and I want to talk to him about this, this, this mistake that he made and all this kind of stuff. When you know what, actually the right, the prudent thing to do is to, in the, in the midst of all that is to make time. And, and it's not just a concession. See, that's one of my key, uh, my key points here. I think is that that's not just a concession to the situation at hand. That is the right thing. It's not good enough. It is the good thing. And perhaps I'm actually discovering some needed humility and other virtues that I lack in when I finally say, you know, Lord, this is what you're calling me to do is actually to go read some Calvin and Hobbes with my kid. And then what I'm actually going to find in that is that that person then is actually more open to the other ways that I'm supposed to, to, to speak into their life. Yeah. I don't disagree with that. I think it's just the context of like, do we introduce Calvin and Hobbes in the first place in the home? And I still say that that whatever situation you're in, you're never going to be able to to insulate them from the world, Mm -hmm. from their own, from this. (laughs) Pete's going to try, darn it. <laughs> well, I mean, but again, you already admitted right. that it's too late. I mean, Pinkalicious has happened, man. The Pinkalicious <laughs> bomb has been dropped. That's my wife's fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, just no. kidding. I love oh, you. Yeah. Cut that. Cut it. Cut, Cut it. it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I... But there's always going to be something, right? There's always going to be something. I think that's Even part if you of the human experience. experience. It's part of the human experience. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but I think like, but we're talking about our choice, our choice to bring into our kid's life or our choice to go into the movies or whatever it may be. Um, so there's going to be some things that we have to kind of react to, but if we're being proactive as far as what movies we we watch and we choose to pay our money for, so on and so forth, like that's the tension or question I think we have to kind of a, wrestle with. I have a picture Bible uh, that uh, it's uh, if I had an example here, people would probably recognize it. I think it was a popular one. I had it when I was a kid. Now my my son has it when he's a kid. Mm-hmm. It's funny when the kids flip through that, what the girls gravitate to, and what the boys gravitate to. Of course, the boys. Grab, go through and find all the all the violence, right. <laughs> you know. Like, and that's what I did. Like I would flip Goliath's through there, head. and I would find. Oh right. man, David just nailed Goliath. You yeah. know, there are other parts of the scripture that I would constantly like to be. You know, let, let's come over here. You know, but again, even in the context, if that was the only book he had, I would have to f- have this balance of well, okay, yeah. I'm, let's talk about this story that really intrigues you, but that's not the only thing I want to invite you further. I have to do both, and if I can't do both. I am going to fail to be able to help that, be able to, to be in relationship with that person and draw them up. Yeah. Don't disagree, but let's end the show with what our favorite movies are. So, Father, we'll start with you. Can we have John like Mark, a couple of few? Then, it's no, so hard see, to this do this is, one. This is the thing is that Pete originally asked me this question yeah. on mm-hmm. live radio once. I was unprepared for it because there are a lot of good movies. And so I just picked the first one that came to mind at that moment. And said much to Peter's sk- scandal. That's just Jurassic Park. It's a good, solid movie. Very quotable. Good special. Like, effects. is that is that Last your favorite favorite? Like, you? Would... I'm I'm sticking with it okay. on principle right. now. Okay, I'm I'm doubling down. Judge for yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it my turn? <laughs> see, yeah, God, what's your favorite movie? Well, um, I think it would be the Lord of the Rings movies. Mm-hmm. They turned out really well. Books to movies don't always go that really well. We like it so much that um, uh, last year it came to Holy Week. And the world was in crisis with the pandemic. And we decided, you know what? This year for Holy Week, we're going to watch in chunks the entire extended edition of all the Lord of the Rings, timing it just precisely so that when the ring is dropped into Mount Doom and that great evil is eliminated from Middle Earth, it times right with uh, the Vigil of Easter. So 
There you go, Pete. You can let me know what you think about that on camera. <laughs> you can you can tell us later which there, one of us there you're were more probably better by. ways. But you know, I thought we thought that that was what the family needed that uh, particular weird Holy Week. You know. And, so, okay. and Peter is Pink Delicious a movie, or do you have to just watch that in episode? Fashion? It's it's episodes okay. cartoon PBS. Uh, so far, I haven't found anything scandalous on it, so I'm okay, okay with it so okay. far. <laughs> yeah. um, you mentioned Shadowlands, which is definitely one of my favorite movies, but It's a Wonderful Life is also oh, up cool. there as well. That's cry every time I watch it. Yes. That's what we're going to talk about mm. next time on the Men's Show. Is it okay to cry at movies? Check us out next time. <laughs> This show and all media on Awaken Catholic is made possible by the Awaken Nation and the Hollow app. The Awaken Nation is a community of people like you who support all things Awaken for as cheap as a cup of coffee a week and get access to exclusive content. Learn more by visiting awakencatholic.org slash donate. Hollow is the only audio guided Catholic prayer app focused on contemplative prayer and traditional Catholic meditation such as Lexio Divina, Daily Examine, and the Rosary. We here at Awaken all use Hollow every day and love it. To learn more or give it a try, visit hollow.app slash awaken.